Wow, wow, wow. Good evening. Good. So good to see you. Good so good to see you. Good so see good you. to see you. I, I, I will enjoy uh, the anthem uh before now I, I mean i'm sure you, you remember the song uh from from Jesse, what god cannot do does not exist right and uh <laughs> i i just want to dive to the deep deep end possibly very quickly you know this year at Warbeck, uh you gave par very powerful words at Warbeck this year and you told in a little bit and I think I saw it, some people trade online in a little bit how that phrase, what God cannot do does not exist, came. Right. You, you were talking about something. I just wanted to talk about it very quickly. And then we'll go into all that things. It just came to my mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Like I, I said, it was, um, a, a, well, uh, just like um, um, a chain of uh, background stories where um, I, I went through a moment when I lost my mom right yeah. and uh, i yeah. i was i was in that space where you know that level of uh, despondency you have especially when and um, you is something that you desired i desired that my mom was going to stay a little longer but when yeah. she died you know in my grief i kept being mm -hmm. interrupted with this scripture with god nothing shall be impossible with god nothing shall be impossible mm -hmm. so I literally say that God took that moment to incubate that scripture in my mind. And you know how it is mm. when your misery becomes your ministry. So mm. God passed me through what seemingly could have been called a, a miserable moment to saying, you know mm. what? The power to make the change, you know, resides in your spirit, man. So, yeah, and pretty much that's where we started from. Yes. Wow. 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 So even even when we grieve sometimes god you know just wants to still touch our hearts Absolutely. and put words in our spirit that can redefine our lives Absolutely. yeah Absolutely. Uh, um, and, and as we start out on this brief discussion tonight i just want to encourage somebody you know just like uh, uh pastor Jerry was saying uh, i don't know how this year started for you maybe it started on not a very great note mm -hmm. maybe you're still trying to come out of grief or something mm -hmm. but please understand that even in the midst of your grief god has a word for you yeah mm -hmm. he does he has a word for you uh, mm -hmm. and that one word can just mark your life uh in a different way uh, and that's that's what i wanted to pick from this first interaction we're having today so pastor jerry welcome to spark uh thank you, thank you for accepting to be my first guest on the monday we're running from monday to friday and it's just a way for me to help some people to gain a head start mm -hmm. about a new year uh, you know and it's such a pleasure to to be able to have you uh on spark be my first guest this year all right so um very quickly i love to tease men of god in a particular way which is well not really tease uh, but to to just tease out some things from you um you know every spiritual family every church every ministry we tend to want to gain direction for the year mm -hmm. and we receive some words from the lord for us at the elevation church our word for the year is on eagle's wings mm -hmm. you know on eagle's wings uh, god said you know what i did to the egyptians and how i brought you out and i carried you you know out on eagle's wings and that's that's the word that we are running with and i'm unpacking it this january as i teach more on it uh i just want to know uh what what word or what statement or what thing uh has god put in your heart uh, i mean what god speaks to streams of joy is speaking to the whole world just like what god is speaking to the elevation church is saying to the whole world so uh, what i want i want to tell us about that word yeah for the year 2024 okay absolutely so it is Elroy the God that sees me so Elroy the Elroy, God that sees me the yes. God that sees me so the encapsulation of every single thing that we're doing the encapsulation of our journey um the totality of um everything that we are going to see mm. in the year 2024 is about Elroy so the, the, why it is so significant for us is the fact that um, when we think about the watchful eyes of God over mm. everything, you know, nothing can be more endearing to know that he that created the whole universe sees you. 
And of course, the whole mm. thing came from the encounter that Hagar had with God, you know, yeah. and that she, th this was a bad girl that has slept with um, the, the master, you know, and this was mm. a girl who obviously had mocked, you know, her mistress and who the son also had mocked the mistress. And I mean, she'd done a couple of wrong things. She was an Egyptian slave, you know, and um, mm. she just gave birth to a child who was not called the child of the promise. And so in that, in, in, with all the negativity surrounding her, and then she was sent out, and Abraham sent her out, you know, with a bottle of water, you know, and there she was in the in the in the desert, you know, crying, and the child was mm -hmm. about to die, mm -hmm. and then she literally threw her child away because I mean I can't watch this child die, but right yeah. there, you know, the Bible said that God opened her eyes, and then she saw a well of water, you know, and all mm -hmm. of that, so interestingly her first contact with Roy was actually the first time that she left the house and God said to her go and submit to you know so the whole encounter that she had with God was when she mm. now called God that name for mm. I have seen the God that sees me and that is El Roy. so God is really de redefining for us what it means for him to watch he sees yeah. every little detail of your life and that's what God is saying to us this year mm. I see you every little detail mm. of your life i heard mm. you when you prayed you know mm. i have seen how they mistreated you i've seen what your desires are you know i've seen your hunger for me i see your quest for me i see your, you know how it is that if, if you put it differently the consciousness of the ever abiding presence of god that is exactly yeah. what we want to push to the hearts of people the god that sees me there's nothing that happens to me that he didn't take note of yeah. every tear every confusion you know i do not think that there's any team of any year that has endeared people so much you know mm. even those who are not in streams of joy you know yeah. nsppd and probably what you probably will hear or say all the time is a roar that god that yes. loves me but god yes. has yeah, that's that's so powerful, so powerful. Uh, the fact that uh, the Bible says his eyes run to and fro yeah. the universe, uh, yes. you know, to, to, just to show himself those, strong, to show himself yes. faith strong, you know, to those who put their trust in him. So this year we should expect and, and live in the awareness, the consciousness of Elroy, Jehovah Elroy, the God who sees us. Uh, if, if you know, he sees us when when we feel up, when we feel down, yes. when we feel lonely, yes. when we, you know, when we feel our expectations are not met, he's seen everything. Yes. Uh, and uh, and that's what endears us mm -hmm. to him, the fact that we're aware of his presence and we can still trust him mm -hmm. when, it, it, even when it looks like it doesn't look like it, you know, mm -hmm. for us. Wow, that, that's, that's really great. So uh, that means this year we should expect the abiding presence of Elroy Absolutely. everywhere we go. His abiding Absolutely. presence going with us everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. And that result, and when his presence is there and it's not passive, mm. it is active presence. Active. That's what exactly. yields the miracles. Absolutely. That's what yields the interventions. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hope you are hearing what Pastor Jerry is saying. Mm -hmm. As you are going to 2024, be conscious of the presence of Elroy. Mm -hmm. Elroy is not there passively, it's not just mm -hmm. seeing you. Uh, it's not just like he's seeing me suffering, you know. His presence is active. And that active presence of Elroy is what, you know, activates all kinds of miraculous interventions in your life as you go into this new year. And you have to be expectant, expectant. Uh, somebody, I, I love the guy, the, the fact that you guys are just showing Pastor Gary love. Show, show some more love, just so sure. Show, show love, show love, uh, show, you know, show some more love. All right, just, just keep it coming. Let, let it, let it roll. All right. So, Pastor Jerry, now we see that the word that you have for the year is Elroy, and we're, we're satisfied with his divine presence. Now, when we bring it to the life of every individual believer, all the thousands of people who are joining us this time, for I mean, from different time zones, what you know. In a place in the scriptures, Jesus was talking to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He calls them hypocrites. He said, because they do not understand spiritual climate and seasons. He said, they understand the weather, the natural weather. Uh, yeah. They see the weather, they say, it is this color and it's going to rain. But they don't understand spiritual climate 
and uh, spiritual seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, in this season, uh, what are the things that you feel, uh, you know, believers should uh, uh, should know, understand, or prepare for as a matter of just discerning the climate or discerning the season that we're in? How should we be positioning to maximize 2024, spiritually speaking? Absolutely. I mean, the first thing I'm going to say to everyone, there is nothing called an outward preparation without an inward preparation. So um, mm. anyone who begins by letting you know that the first thing you're going to do is to make sure that you posture yourself this way, position yourself this way, more or less like let's do a physical makeover without them telling mm. you the first thing you have to put in place is your mind. Right. Mm. So this is where it's going to come from. You have to put your mind in place. In fact, let me say the totality of the spiritual infrastructure, you know, mm. and then taking it further to your mental infrastructure, you know, and all of that. Mm. So that in itself will set a guideline, will set a foundation on the things that you are definitely going to find out. So how exactly does my inner man, how, how, how does it look in my inner man? Is my inner man noisy? Do I have a sense mm. of, you know, direction? Mm. Do I have a sense of calmness in my inner mm. man? You know, yeah. do I have a sense of clarity in my inner man? What is God saying to me in my inner man? Mm. Because what you're going to find out is that we're going to have a lot of people say, I'm sending this friend out of my life. And be, see, a noisy spirit will still attract the kind of persons that you sent out of your life. So mm, you must mm. be able to, you know, ask yourself, what is the, what, what, what is my spiritual infrastructure like? Mm. You know, mm. what is my mental infrastructure like? You know, because those are the things that we did. So it's not exactly about what to do, it's about mm. how to be, you know. So mm. it's about being. For me, it's yeah. more about being much more than it is doing right mm -hmm. now if you do a lot without being chances are that you will not sustain your doing because you are not that being because i mean you yeah. you, you just you just throw up random acts yeah you know yeah. but then again yeah. your being is not in sync yeah yeah. So absolutely yeah. so yeah. that is what it is so starting from the inner man then away from that as well you know um, the Bible will say, write the vision and make it plain, that he that read it, it may run with it, you know, and all of that. It's not very tidy for you to journey another one here without you having a clear um, vision, like what do I want? Where am I going to? That in mm. itself will let you know how many persons you're supposed to do the journey with, yeah. you know, and how is it? So concerning your career, where exactly are you going to? right? Concerning your work with God, where exactly are you going to? So you'll be able to know this is exactly where I'm going to, and these are the expectations of God, you know, for my life and all of that. And then, you know, the, 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 this is not a year of competition, but a year of collaboration, you know, so you're going to have to find out what are and who are the people I need to collaborate with as the years are going by. You know, so those are the things that you need to. And so it's also a year where you're going to sit back. and So I, I, could, I could, positioning is key, if you ask me. Positioning mm. is key. Where do I position myself and all of that? But one major thing I need to tell people, please don't overestimate your capacity. Yeah. Right? So it's mm. the Bible, the Jesus, uh, scriptures will say, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. So mm. what are my needs? What is the gap? what can i do differently you know so mm. and that in itself will be the sum total of what will position you however like i said remember the foundation of your becoming the foundation of your becoming begins yeah. with your spirit man it begins with your spirit man it begins from the inside because you're mm. going to have a lot of people who are starting the year with fire for god starting the year mm. with passion but then again, they can't sustain it because it's not their being. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. It is the being that is there. It is the mode that has to sustain all of these actions eventually. So that is what it is. That's, that's, so, that's so good. That's so good. So uh, um, for you to discern and work with God this year, mm. uh, Pastor Jerry is saying, 
your internal uh, you know infrastructure your spiritual and your mental uh, uh, infrastructure and the architecture of your mind where is your mind are you at mm. rest are you mm. at peace um, are you you know are you calm in your spirit are you clear about mm. the things that mm -hmm. god wants to do have you been able to put them down mm -hmm. to say i'm clear about this mm -hmm. Uh, nothing can convince me that this will not happen. And mm -hmm. these areas where I'm not clear, how can mm -hmm. I how can I then position to be able to gain clarity in those areas? Mm -hmm. You know, there are areas where you already have encounters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are definitely sure mm -hmm. that this one is sure banker is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But there are areas where you need to seek encounter for. Mm -hmm. So when when you join a prayer line, when you go to church, mm -hmm. when you you know that as you are praying. Uh, these are the areas where I need clarity. These are the areas where uh, maybe there's still a bit of fear and agitation in my spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to maximize God's presence in this gathering mm -hmm. to be able to gain some calmness and clarity in, into my spirit in these areas. Because from what PJ was saying, this is very important. If you will maximize what God has in mind, you know, for this year. And then he also said, uh, you know, like uh, I've always reiterated that being is more important than doing. Mm. Who you are is more mm -hmm. important than what you are trying mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So why don't you trust God, the arrow that, that sees you, to transform mm -hmm. who you are <laughs> mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that there will not be any struggle, you know, doing. Incidentally, I was still talking about this in church, uh, I think yesterday, where I was saying, rather than praying this year, Lord, I don't want to lie again. I don't want to do this again. Don't mm. focus on sin. Focus mm. on the fact that you want to become a righteous mm. person. Mm. So focus on who you want to become, not what you don't mm. want to do again. Mm. Because when you become who you're supposed to be, there are some things that you won't even be able to do again because mm. your status has changed. Yeah. Mm. And when your status changes, your 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 action will change. Uh, and that's that's just the, the you know the summary of what what pastor jerry just said uh thank you show some love show some love to pastor jerry show some love to pastor jerry um uh, you know i have one or two more questions then i'm, I'm then going to well uh, i'm going to throw some some jabs and banter on our own level you understand on the on friendship level but before let's let's finish reading some more serious things first <laughs> all right so um sharpening discernment pastor jerry mm -hmm. Um, I've seen you grow in the sharpening of discernment mm. over the years. Mm. Uh, one of the areas where many believers fail to actualize our divine advantage in God is the inability to sharpen their discernment for divine direction. One of the divine advantage of a believer in Christ is that uh, just like David wrote in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is not a rhetorical statement. It was a statement made out of conviction. Mm -hmm. When somebody says, the Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. so I shall not want. It's born out of a conviction. And that conviction, you know, also demonstrates that this person knows, look, uh, um, I can, I can pick signal. I understand what God is doing. Uh, it's my shepherd. He leads me. And mm -hmm. I can be the sheep and I will follow. I wanted to just talk to us about it a little bit. One of the things that uh, the devil uses to shorten believers is when they become goats, recalcitrant, cannot be led, no more pliable in God's hand. So we do all these things in January, we are very sober. Mm -hmm. But some people, by Valentine next month, they have everything has gone. And now behaving like goats, you know not getting direction again no discernment i want to speak to that a little bit yeah absolutely so one major thing that lays the foundation for proper discernment and direction is brokenness mm. and so if brokenness. all that god wants to achieve is to make you malleable in his hands so the bedrock mm. of my fellowship with god and consistency of what i do all of it stems mm. from the how much God can break you, mm. you know. So a broken man doesn't have a life of his own. A mm. broken man mm. oozes the fragrance of mm. God's presence. 
Mm. A broken man is so empty that God can pour out, pour in divine deposits into him. A broken mm. man is a, the Bible will call it a living sacrifice, mm. you know. Mm. So mm. in that state of brokenness, like you are not, you know, you know, you know, a broken person is not yet used to God, you know. Mm. A broken person is not yet in the mode of religion mm. because he sees everything like fellowship. Yeah. A b- broken person does not, is never used to the word of God, is never used to it. So the only way for me to describe this is that a broken person approaches God with a childlike attitude. Mm. And that is the hallmark of brokenness. You know, that is why the Bible says a broken and contract heart, God will not overlook. So it is in the place of brokenness that God will be able to say something to you because he knows you're malleable in his hands. That's where you'll be able to discern and know, okay, what is God saying? And the Bible says to the children of Israel, God showed them his acts. But to Mm. Moses, God showed his ways Mm. because here was, he was not a perfect man but he was a broken mm. man, mm. you know? And so the mm. first thing that God does whenever he encounters men is to mm. kill the man in them because what mm. he wants to communicate with is your spirit. Mm. And so in, in the place of brokenness, that's where you, can, you would be able to. So let me say what discernment is not. God mm. will never grant you discernment to foster your canality. However, mm. discernment is a product of a fellowship you enjoy with the Father that mm. He gives to you so as to grant you effective clarity and direction in life. So yeah. see, see, see what a lot of people want. Lord, I want to do this. I, will, I This is what I want. Lord, you have to leave me now. You have to leave me. What This is what I want to do. And God is saying, why are you asking me for this when you don't even talk to me? You don't even talk mm. to me. We don't, we, don't, we don't talk. So uh, let, me, let me give you an example, uh, uh, PG. So um, someone who doesn't greet you, someone who doesn't say hello to you, you know, walks by, mm. by, by your house and says, um, excuse me, sir, um, do you know where I could um, get, um, um, do you know where I could get coffee around here? Because you're Christian. Mm. You would just say down the road. Yeah, yeah down no, the road. Yeah. Maybe you should yeah, just go there. So, but if it's someone who's always very warm to you and then greets you, waves you when you're driving past, and then the person walks up to you and says to you, Oh, Pidgey, where can I get coffee down the road? You say, Well, you see, that shop, right? Mm. They sell coffee. Mm. However, what kind of coffee are you looking at? So if you're looking at this type of coffee, this type of coffee, maybe you should try the other shop over there because, and then you go on and even what he did not ask you. Yes. Go on. I can even say, and then as you are going, take this $10 for your coffee. Because you are a good person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because I have a relationship with this person. So I don't have a relationship with you. You are asking me, I will answer you. So this is what happens with a lot of Christians. So they don't, they don't, mm. you're not talking to this God. You don't, you don't speak with him. You don't communicate with him. And then you mm. wake up one morning and say, God, please, I need direction on this. He's going to speak to you, but you're not going to get the full picture. You're not going to mm. get the full direction. Mm. But if you are even talking with God ordinarily, even before you ask him, because he wrote the script of your life, you might just be mm. on your knees and the spirit of God begins to speak to you five years from now. PG, I tell you the truth, I lie not right? There are too many things happening in my life right now. I mm. probably received them like four years ago. So, mm. and when it happens, it just gives me, okay, there are things that happen. Like I said, yesterday, there was something um, our general manager said to me yesterday, the general manager mm. of our church, you know, mm. as soon as they said to me, I said, goodness, where have I heard this before? Where have I heard this before? I know that I answered him, but I just kept asking myself, I've heard this thing he has said before. I've heard this thing. Mm. Did you guess where I heard it? I heard it in the place of prayer. So he was just mm. saying, but I said, 
who told me this? Who told me this? Who told me this? Who told me this? You know, and God already said to me, this is what you're going to experience when it comes to in 2024. Right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, yeah. will further break, I will further break it down. It's, it's just a thing of expansion as it has to do with our ministry. You know, mm. and so my general manager comes to me and says, you know what, sir? You know, uh, there's a big problem now that we have. Um, the overflow cannot take the people in the overflow anymore. So right now we have a big problem. So and I remember that God had already said that to me, that listen, you've got to prepare that in the first half of the year, in the first quarter of the year, there's something that is going to come, be, that is going to be bigger than you. The harvest is going to be bigger than you. So, I mean, I didn't pray for it, but he already mm -hmm. saw it and was already pointing me in that direction. That. So when some yes. things happen to you, it will happen like deja vu. But we have a generation who only wants to talk to God when there is need. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm. not talk to God because there is need. Mm -hmm. We talk to God like, you know, the absolute love brokenness you have yeah. you know i don't know how best to describe it it's just it's just it is to keep your love no i get you ever before i get you eyes. yeah you know, i get you and, that, and, that, and that's the hallmark so you see someone from different from another and then you feel oh that guy is heavily anointed you too can be heavily anointed mm. you too can be heavily anointed you can't stay with him and come out and be ordinary it's not even possible you can, that's right. You can, that's right. You can. You can. You can. Mm. You can. You, can, you mean you spend an hour with God? You spend two hours with God? That's why the devil is fighting it. Mm. That's why the devil just wants you to just have a moment with God. Just have five minutes and ten minutes here, fifteen minutes, and walk away. No, this is a year of power. This that's right. Year where we're going to see God like never before. This is a year yeah. that you're going to walk in dimensions that will scare everyone that used to know you. This is a year mm -hmm. where the heavens portals are open to you, and God is in a hurry to pour so much because we are in the last days. We always look at the last days as ah, the world is about to close. The world is about to close. No, look mm -hmm. at the last days from the viewpoint of there's so much heaven wants to release. It is still mm -hmm. being suspended, but yeah. there's just that's right. people. Just, just that's let's right. Just, let's not look at it as the world is about to close something mm. wrong is about to happen mm. it's the last days and the last days i will pour the word is not sprinkled the word is poor oh. god is in a hurry but he's saying poor can you spirit, spend? Yeah? i'm looking for those who can spend more time with yes me. right now some yes. people don't get it so let me tell you what's mm. happening uh, uh, P pg mm. is that god is gathering things meant for a generation and putting it in one person. That's right. Just putting it in one person. Because That's right. the generation is not even ready. Yes. The generation, God so is when he says he right wants now. to pour yes. out, yes. it depends on your container, yes. the container you yes. brought. The container. You can collect enough yes. for a whole city, for a whole Absolutely. country. You can collect just for your family. Yes. yes, but you can collect for global impact. Absolutely. You can collect because it's pouring out. Mm. And not everybody is collecting. Mm. So some of us are to collect, but we should be mindful of the size of our container mm. with which we mm. can collect. Mm. So mm. what you are saying, PJ, is that we should not be focused on they're about to close the gate. We should be focused yes. on what is flowing. Yes. Because some people are yes. by emphasizing yes. the rapture will not yes. happen than the fact that God is eager yes. to bless people, yes. to transform lives, yes. to win more souls, yes. to find people to use, yes. so that before the gate closes, we mm -hmm. can ramp up the impact of two centuries mm -hmm. into 10 years, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and he's looking for people who will have the capacity yes. to contain yes. what a whole, you know, a few days ago, you and I were having a, a chat on food and we're talking about, you know, uh, sometimes people misunderstanding the move of God and misunderstanding you and uh, thinking that, you know, NSPPD is just uh, a place where people just come to say amen and all that. People are not praying. People are not. They, what they don't understand is that it's an impartation platform. It's yes. a, yeah, NSP, NSPPD is a crusade. It's, it's a not crusade. a church service. It's yeah, a it's, a, it's, a, it's a power platform. Absolutely. Yeah, and these are, yeah. these are so, places where mm. men are being stretched. Mm. 
right? Mm. Men are being stretched. Mm. Like you were, you were talking about, you know, that, that God stretching you, mm. stretching the container that you are. All of that happens in his presence. And that is why I say brokenness is the need of the season. Now, the, mm. I, in my prayer night, a prayer a moment this night, God sees the container that I am and he's definitely pouring. So mm. it is in that place that God looks at the container. I say, you know what? There's a new grace coming. There's a new mm. oil coming. The container mm. that you are can carry it. So can mm. I break you now? Can I break you now? He just hits you, bah, right. and then mm. removes you again, stretches you. Otherwise, the content you had yesterday is what your generation will still see by tomorrow. Mm. And let mm. me let you know the reason why some people consider you irrelevant is that they are used to your content. Mm. They are used to to mm. your content they're used to everything about you but there is something mm. that comes with the newness that comes from the father that the generation cannot God. resist you Praise they can when God. they think they have Praise their hands God. on you mm. they think that i understand you i understand the dimension boom, boom, boom. god just does something mm. that they can't see coming and god says listen i'm not i just want to reintroduce who you are you know and that's mm. how a generation will you know, get into the fullness of what God is there. So, and PJ, I need to say this at this time. I want people to know that God wants to raise man. Mm. This is what God mm. keeps saying to me. I want to raise men. You know, if only some people will be very, because I believe there are men of God who probably, um, I, I don't know, I don't know, but I, I, just, I just feel so strongly that there are men of God who just joined us on this platform or who are here. And all mm. that God is saying that, yes, I, I just feel it in my spirit to tell you, you are the one that God has chosen to be a voice to nations. And don't ever, and, and, and all that God is saying is that, if you will let me stretch you, if you will let me stretch you, because I'm going to really stretch you. I'm going to really stretch you. You know, PG, I, I, during the time before people got to know who, you know, in the, in the, in the twilight of the COVID, right? In mm. the twilight of the COVID, I, I literally found God stretching me. Mm. I kept doing it. He kept stretching me. And I didn't know why. A few times, you know, I, I came to Exponential before COVID, right? Mm. And I came to preach in the pastor's uh, meeting in, during COVID, you know. There was something you said to me, you know, and all of that, which I didn't even have the answer. It was a joke, you know, that you usually, you know, you know crack. And then you, you, you said to me, oh, Pastor Jerry, your, your, your agony is too much, you know. You, you know, you, you have a lot of... I used to um, tell you that you're too stubborn. Uh, yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, your agony is too much. And between you and I, I had no idea why I was that extra yes that's the word yes you know you're too extra you're too extra you know i didn't even understand why i was that extra but when mm. i think about post-covid i knew mm. why i was extra for nothing nothing mm. important because mm. god knew that i need to put you together for the assignment that is coming and this is me telling everyone here choose to be extra for nothing because mm. you're extra will be needed for mm. something. For something. So the extra for nothing prepares you for extra for something. Yes, yes. Because when some, the time for something mm. comes, it must meet you with extra. If not, yes. you can't carry it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So when you are extra for nothing, it's preparing you for something. Uh, uh, let me just give you, the, for uh, all of the people joining us tonight, whether men of God or just Christians, is that what Pastor Jerry is saying is that uh, there's a way we position. To the world, it looks like we're extra. I used to mm. tease him then. He was, he, Pastor Jerry was talking about our pastors and leaders conference that we hold every year, and he's a regular speaker there. Uh, uh, we're holding another one in February, and he will be there to speak. And, you know, we've been friends of many years, and we used to joke and I'll tell him, calm down. You, you know, <laughs> your, 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 your ginger is too much. You know, <laughs> you know, I know that. Even when I'm introducing him, I will introduce him. I say, hey, the ginger man is here, the fire, <laughs> you know. And it, 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 God was using all that to just prepare for the real substance. Mm. That, those were the days of practice, you know, mm. before the game started. Mm. You know, mm. now... The game has started. Mm. And for some people, it's just like when you are running a relay race. When is your time to pick the baton? You are not supposed to be standing. Mm. You are supposed to be mm. running. Mm. The baton is not even in your hand yet. Mm. But mm. you are already 
already running. That's mm. what shows the person who is ready to receive a mantle, the person who is ready to receive a mandate from God, so the person who is ready to pick what is in the next season. It shouldn't meet you standing. It should that's meet right. you running. That's right. Yeah, that's literally what Pastor Jerry said. It should not meet you standing. It will meet you running. Just like what happened on the relay race. If you are the one that is supposed to pick the baton, next, you're supposed to be running. Be running. And then they're going to put it in your hand. Somebody, you know, I pray for you that you will, you will not stand still this year when you're supposed to be running. <laughs> in, the name, in the name of Jesus. So, Pastor Jerry, I love what you said about perfect and brokenness. Mm. Many people slow down in their relationship with God because they feel they are not perfect. So, uh, you know, I'm still seeing it small, small. So I can now be saying, I'll be spending time in prayer when I know that I'm still struggling with this mm. sin and all that. And it's important that somebody understands God is not looking mm. for mm. perfect verses. Mm. He's looking mm. for broken verses. That's right. Yeah, a broken and a contrite right. spirit Yes, the Lord yes. will not reject. Yes. That's what the psalm is saying. Yes. A contrite heart mm. and a broken spirit, the mm. Lord will not reject. Mm. So, in my weakness, in my struggle, mm. if I can still spend time in the place of prayer, understanding mm -hmm. that God mm. will not reject me, that's mm -hmm. where it fixes me. Absolutely. I leave the place of prayer feeling stronger against the things that have been holding me down. Mm feeling stronger against, you know, the habits that I'm struggling mm -hmm. with. God is looking for brokenness. Mm -hmm. You know, God is looking for brokenness. Now, you know, there, there was uh, something that uh, Pastor Kodi said at uh, Wafbeck when we were there together, uh, that you were at an event, uh, Pastor Nathaniel's event, and I think Pastor Nathaniel should be joining me tomorrow, actually. Uh, Pastor Nathaniel's event in London. And the way you saw what God was doing, you broke down. Mm -hmm. And as I I heard that I said, oh, my friend is a crier. He can cry for the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> but now I understand the, I mean, I've always understood it anyway. It's coming from a broken heart. Yeah. You know, how you see what God is doing. Yeah. I mean, many times when you post uh, something on social media, uh, maybe you're crying or you're lying prostrate or something, just happened and you're saying how did we get here and all um it's all that is a sign of brokenness okay. i wanted to speak to that a little bit especially for people that it looks like god is helping them now okay. yeah when god starts to uh like when somebody said when god starts to pick your call <laughs> You know, when it looks like, uh, you know, uh, God God has put you on the radar, whether as a businessman, as a career person, you're doing great and all that. How do you keep a broken heart? You know, it, because, you know, it's easy to be broken, to mm. keep a broken heart when you are broken down. Yes. As in when you are, when, yes. when there's no yes. breakthrough. Yes. But when breakthrough comes, mm. how do we still keep a contract and a broken heart Absolutely. Yeah, before God? You, you know, you know, PG, the, the thing is, um, as much as you understand that nothing God is doing with you and what mm. nothing God is doing in you, that nothing is anything that you deserve, mm. right? right? Um, I pray, I agree. However, I am very much aware that there are those who also pray that don't have the kind of results that I do have. It is... Mm. Absolutely very humbling. You see, till tomorrow, mm. this guy you see here will forever. I can look at there are people who knew that God would bring them to where they are. I mm. had no idea. I wanted mm. to be just the guy, serve God in my own corner in the little city that I lived in, and all of that. In fact, I was telling my PA today, and I said to my PA, Is there not some way I can do this ministry? without mm. being in the face of people is there no some way i mm. can be a blessing you know to people without being in their face you know i know i don't like i don't like to be talked about i don't like my name to be put here i don't like you know so you know people just so is there no so this is me still not i don't love the fame i love mm. the works of god but i don't love the fact that you know he said so I remember where God brought me from. So it mm. is something that I am forever, you know. And imagine the creator of the whole universe choosing mm. you 
to show forth his power pg yeah do you know how many cancers have i not i've seen i, I mean i've seen i've seen the lame walk the paralyzed i've seen PJ, you see all kinds of miracles, all kinds of, I know there are too many problems in this world, but I've seen all kinds of, how do you see such a thing and you consider and you sit back and say, it is a normal thing. It's a normal mm. thing. The day you believe you are the one doing this, that's the day God is going to step out of your life. Mm. So I still live in awe each day to see people, blind eyes open, lame people walk, presidents of nations, bow to jesus I'm, mm. I'm not talking about you know this kind of president of nations who want to contract you to come and pray for them they are asking you what must i do to be saved what can i do you know looking for jesus and i absolutely think it's the one of the best things that can happen to anyone so when i see yeah. that jesus is being glorified mm. and i am not you know i, I usually will say to my 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 staff all the time i tell them i'm not just a big man of god there are things that mm. you know when we they, we go with it they say oh pastor let, let's do this for you let, let's do this i say no 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 I, I still want to have sense i am not mm. a big man of god yet you know and mm. i love those who are so but when i i see all that god does around me the mm. only response that ensures longevity in ministry mm. is humility the only Amen. response to any divine act around you that mm. will ensure longevity is humility. Mm. The only mm. response to any divine act that will ensure longevity for what you are doing is, is humility. So when I, I, I literally, uh, those tears come down from my eyes, it's, it's me trying to say to God, you know, I, I don't know, but I, 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 you could have, I mean, there are no words. There's no words. And I, mm. I truly, I truly love my best moment is worship moment. Because a whole lot of my redefine mm. and everything that has happened to me that has redefined my life came during the time of worship. You know, mm. the instructions I've gotten from God came during the time of worship. So, so nobody should even distract. And so what Pastor Nathaniel was talking about was actually the moment that uh, someone was leading worship there. I just disconnected from everybody. I just went to the one corner, you know, just knelt down at that corner and all of that, you know, sat down. Said, you know, sorry, but you see, I'm yet to understand. I'm sorry that I'm going personal right now. Yeah. I, I'm yet to understand why worship will be going on in a church. And... Mm some pastors will be supervising the worship or mm. the church is standing up worshiping and some you're because you're a pastor you're sitting down while worshiping mm. shane are you with the worship is he you that we are worshiping so and we must understand that you know that you're you're it pg you know one thing i always remind myself before i am a man of god i mm. am first a child of God. Because That's right. That's right. I am a man of God. I am first. So you must first yeah. of all live as a child of God to be able to fulfill right. your calling as a man of mm -hmm. God. You must yes. live like a child of God in order to be able to fulfill your calling as a man of God. As a child of yes. God. Mm. Yeah, as a man of God. Okay. So living like a child of God to fulfill your calling as a man of God. And, and it's the same thing. You have to live like a child of God to fulfill your calling as a business mogul. Yes. You have to live like a child of God to fulfill your calling as a mother of three or mother of four or mother of two. Yes. Uh, you have to live like a child of God to fulfill your calling as a husband or fulfill your calling as a bank manager yes. or a politician. Yes. Whatever God has called you to yes. do, you have to live like a child of god to be able to fulfill that calling the yeah. foundation or the fulfillment of your calling in christ notwithstanding yeah. the sector where you function is yeah. living as a child of god primarily yeah. because it's the foundation that holds everything together yeah. all right um uh, maybe i'll just a uh, time is far spent um I, I still want you to say a word of prayer over the people before you go because i can see uh if a, a, a number of requests in the question box where people are just saying no oh, but before we do that just one 
uh, um, one last thing that I wanted to speak to uh, very, very quickly. You said something about the fact that God is always looking for people to use. You know, and many people don't understand that. They think that this is like a football match where it's only 11 on this side, 11 on that yeah. side. And when the, the field is filled with 11, you cannot add except you remove somebody. Somebody does not have to come down before you can go up. Mm. This is not a football match. Mm. We are not, it's not English Premier League. Mm. Yeah. This is kingdom mm. assignment and kingdom business. Mm. Nobody needs to fall before I rise. Mm. All right. Uh, we are not looking for first 11. Mm -mm. God is looking for people to use, mm -hmm. you know. But we live in a time where, whether believers or men of God, uh, we are losing our sense for collaboration. Competition is very rife, and people just feel like uh, well, it's a, it, uh, the team is 11 people, and if I don't call somebody to, you know, uh, come down, me, I cannot go up. Uh, and I just wanted to, to encourage people, because uh, uh, some of us, by the grace of God that God is using today, we did not organize anybody's downfall mm. before grace came mm. upon us. <laughs> mm. We didn't participate in seeing anybody or organizing anybody for. So I just wanted to, to say something about that just to encourage somebody and then we'll tie this up uh, uh, as we pray. And I know you have also been uh, taking a fair share of that, you know, bit of people just wondering, who is this person? Mm -hmm. Or some people just think, what can we even do, Seth, to, mm -hmm. uh, to malign him or to throw shades? And, yeah. And, and I, I want everyone who has been going through encounters with God I want to encourage you again that your encounters are authentic. I want to mm. add, you know, assure everyone who's been in that place where you've been interfacing with God, praying, holding on strong to him, that everything you're doing is authentic. But see what doesn't work, people of God. For every mm. time that God breathes into you, you have a mandate to go and exhale to a generation. So mm. there are still places unreached where people will mm. see the power of God. And this is not just about ministry, it's also about the marketplace. So I also need you to understand that God has been looking for a vessel he will use to manifest his power. And what mm. the problem is that you are looking at your encounters and you're discarding them. You are looking at all the great works that God is doing in your life and you're discarding. And God is saying, everything I spoke to you about is authentic. Everything, I the times when you read the word of God, the times you were in prayer, and God said, I will use you. I will, it is authentic. And all I need you to do is to come to that place where you're going to embrace and say, okay, God, was it me you are speaking to? Lord, I receive it. You know, Gideon was like this. When God said to him, you know, great and um, thou mighty man of Vino, mm. if Gideon said, where do all the miracles that we've heard? You know, and God said, no, Gideon, don't talk like this. There's something inside of you. And this is what mm. I came to encourage someone with. Your encounters are authentic. Every single mm. thing God spoke about you is valid. Yeah. This, the only responsibility you owe your generation is to rise. Mm. Like, I don't know how best to preach this message. You don't need another encounter. You need just the rising. You don't need mm. God to speak the word. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in December still on the same level. Rise rise mm. go and find lord how can i who will now I, i'm going to say this as i tidy up you know the truth mm. is that when peter and john spoke to the man at the beautiful gates and i was sharing with my church oh that was what just him, in my mind as we were talking right now yeah. so so you say know, say it go ahead say it. you yeah. know and they said uh -huh. to him you know rise up you know mm. and walk and all of that one major thing that they did was that before they spoke the word rise up and walk, but they held the man by the hand uh, they held uh, the man by the hand up. and then yeah. raised him it was at the point they raised him up that his bones you know and his leg received stress that's what the bible said uh, when uh, you know you're in your season of rising look for someone who can hold your hand look for someone uh, who has a stronger hand than you just find someone you know that this is my rising season even if they are running away from you, look for them, pursue them, hold your hand so that you can actually have them raise your hand because you've got a word. They've already released the word, rise up and walk. They, they, you've got a prophecy. It is your season. You've got a prophecy. It is your time. You've got a prophecy. And however, 
there has to be a holding of your hand for your legs mm. to receive strength. So I mm. need you to know that every man God has ordained to hold your hand so that your legs can receive strength. Mm. They are being sent mm. into your life in this season. They are coming in. They are coming into your life. They are coming in because you are moving to the next season of your life in the name of Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So before, before we pray, uh, I wanted to show Pastor Jerry some love, uh, and I wanted to know that Spark will continue tomorrow. I think tomorrow I should be having Pastor Nathaniel Bathy uh, join me. We're going to be having similar discussions and also getting into some areas that are his own, and then uh, other men of God on, on the ticket, uh, Pastor Yemi David, uh, 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 Pastor Emmanuel Iron, and Pastor Kingsley Okonkwo. Uh, you know, we're going to be digging in in different directions. This week is loaded, and I want you to uh, continue to, to join in. Um, uh, PJ, uh, you know, between you and I, if they leave us, we can remain here till midnight. <laughs> mm, mm. These are things that we talk about in private and we talk for hours. And uh, sometimes I wish people are listening to our discussion, at least the type, the ones that are not personal. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because uh, a lot flows yeah. when, when we share yeah. and when we just talk. You know, uh, and that's why uh, you know I love to have you on this kind of discussion. Um, iron sharpening iron, a brother sharpens the countenance of his friend. That's what the scripture says. And then the sparks uh, get to bless people. Uh, okay. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to do uh, this. You know, again a couple of more times this year, okay. not just January. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, trusting God that the year will yield fantastic fruit for all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to know uh, that we love you. We appreciate the grace of God upon your life. Uh, we, we, nobody can deny the hand of God on your life. Uh, this is not going to be for a season. Mm -hmm. It's the call of God on your life. What the Lord does will last forever Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, as you pray and bless the people tonight, Bible says either water shall be watered back also. As you pray over them and water them, I'm trusting God to water you exceedingly. Uh, NSPPD, this week, uh, there will be unusual miracles in the name of Jesus. The God who sent you will always back up uh, his word and back up the assignment that has given you Amen. in Jesus name. So Pastor Gary, I want to just say a blessing over the people. Many people are anticipating a blessing. Uh, the faith of people uh, is on the line uh, just to receive something. You know, so just say a blessing over there. Yeah. Our Father, we thank you. Thank you for everyone connected to us today. Lebedo shakati in the Loro Subada. Father, ripata kusaba liada shapo rakente yana si kalado shadaba. Lekedo soto balabala. And we decree that great grace is multiplied over their lives. Father, we decree Amen. that your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding is released over them. Lord, as yes, the year God. begins, O oh God, let there be clarity of purpose. And let there be a fresh oil of your power and your fullness upon their lives. Father, let the heavens Amen. over their heads be opened for great exploit. Father, let Amen. there be a patterning according to your heart desire. Let there be an aligning to your desire and purpose for their life. Father, today we decree and declare that everyone under the out of my voice with any form of infirmity, disease, affliction, sent by delay or denial. Lord, with the decree, let it be reversed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release angels. We release ministry angels. We release ministry angels. We release ministry angels into their lives in this time in the name of Jesus. Father, let the oil of ease, the mantle of ease, the mantle of ease, they will find things easy. Whatever they have created a seed in 2023 shall become an early harvest for them in 2024 in the name of Jesus. Father, bless their family. Let sieges be broken. Let
let embargoes be destroyed. Amen. Let limitations be destroyed. Amen. Father, we decree that they are guarded by you. Father, we decree Amen. that they are moving up. Amen. Father, we decree that Amen. divine acceleration is their portion. Father, we decree restoration Amen. is their portion. As many that are seeking you in praying and fasting, Amen. Father, Lord, I decree that the heavens will be opened over them. Amen. Father, that they will indeed say that you capacitated them for the rest of their journey. Amen. Doors are open. Touch the hearts of men to favor them. Touch the hearts of men to favor them. Father, we decree mm-hmm. that this is their last day on this particular level that they are in. He shall be said, on the night I joined Spark, that was when the Lord occasioned my transition to the next level. Amen. Father, so shall it be. We will love you more. We will be on fire for you. We will fulfill yes. our days in absolute yes. devotion to your will Amen. and to your path. We decree it is done. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you very, very much, Pastor Jerry. Uh, so grateful that you could join me tonight. I know that, uh, I mean, uh, you're obliged <laughs> because of our friendship and all that, but I don't take yes. it for granted that I yes. could just have you join, join, join me on Spark. Thank you very, very much. And like I've said before, as you have watered us tonight, God will water you back in the name of Jesus. Amen. If only you can see the heart of the people. I can see how they're showing love and the goodwill in their heart uh, will cause great and the mercy of God to continue to rest upon you. You will not grow weary. You will not faint. And the strength of God will continue to overshadow you in Jesus' precious name. We love you. We celebrate you. Uh, we, we know that the best is still ahead in the future. In Amen. Jesus' name. We love you, my friend. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, PJ. God bless you. Yeah. Good night, everyone. God bless you. And see you on Spark tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm trusting that Pastor Natalia will be able to join us. Uh, uh, and the promises to be a powerful, powerful uh, time. So please join me tomorrow, Pastor Natalia Bassi. Uh, and afterwards on Wednesday, I think uh, uh, Apostle Emmanuel Iron will be joining me promises to be a powerful, powerful week, just loaded, loaded, um, expecting Pastor Yemi Davis also and Pastor Kingsley Okonko. So loaded time, please join me tomorrow. God bless you. 9 p.m. Nigerian time, West African time, 9 p.m. tomorrow. Please join me. God bless you. Have a powerful night and a beautiful new year. Bye for now. <laughs>